Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving an interesting super duper exponential equation. So we have x to the power x plus y equals x plus y to the power y. And we're going to be looking for real solutions, not just integer solutions, but real solutions. I'm going to be showing you an interesting graph at the end and we'll discuss a couple of solutions. All right, let's get started. So to be able to solve this equation, hopefully you'll remember a while ago, and I'll try to share the link down below, we've done a similar equation, which looked like x to the power y equals y to the power x. I also made a short on this one. Anyways, so for these kinds of equations, we can use a generic method, which is replacing y with something like k times x. k is just another variable or a parameter, uh, whatever you want to call it. So I'm going to go ahead and replace k, I mean replace y with kx. Okay. And then let's do the replacement. We get x to the power x plus kx equals x plus kx to the power kx. So y will be replaced with kx everywhere. So looking at this equation, you'll probably conclude that if x is 0, then y is 0. But that's not the case. Because if you look at our situation, if x is 0, we have a 0 base. And if y is also 0, then we have a 0 exponent, which is not good because you don't really want to deal with 0 to the power 0, which is not 1, by the way. It's an indeterminate form. Anyways, let's go ahead and proceed with x does not equal 0 and y does not equal 0. Okay. What are we going to do? We're going to eliminate some of the problems, issues here. So we'll, we'll clean it up. Let's go ahead and do the following. Let's take out an x here. That's going to give us 1 plus k. And inside the parentheses, we can basically factor out x just like before. It's going to give us 1 plus k again. But then we have to raise this product to the power k times x. Great. Before we do anything with the bases, let's go ahead and eliminate or simplify the exponents. So here's what, what I can do. Since we have x in the exponent on both sides and x does not equal 0, I can just go ahead and raise both sides to the power 1 over x. And let's do it on both sides. And when we do, the exponents are going to be multiplied. x multiplied by 1 over x is just going to be 1. So x cancels out, in other words x cancels out. Since x does not equal 0, I can do this. Now we got a simpler form, much better form, which is x to the power 1 plus k equals x times 1 plus k to the power k. Now you're raising a product to the power k, so you're going to raise every factor to the power k, so it's going to be x to the k times 1 plus k to the power k. So far, so good, right? Okay. Now, here's what we're going to do next. We're going to make it even better. So we're going to simplify more. First of all, separate x to the power 1 plus k into two factors, such as x to the power 1, which is x, times x to the power k. And that equals x to the k multiplied by 1 plus k to the power k. Awesome. Now, since x does not equal 0, x to the power k does not equal 0, because if the base is not 0, then obviously the result can never be 0. So we can go ahead and divide both sides by x to the k, or just cancel it out. And we get a much, much simpler form, which is nice, right? So we get x equals 1 plus k to the power k from here. But what is y? How do you find y? Well, remember how we got started, right? We said that, hey, suppose y equals kx. So since we now know what x is in terms of k, we can basically just find y. y is just going to be kx, which means k times 1 plus k to the power k. Awesome. So we got the value of x and y in terms of k. Next, we're going to replace k with a couple different values to see what it looks like. And then I'm going to show you the graph. Great. So let's go ahead and replace k with 1, which is kind of like a simpler uh, form. If k is 1, Obviously, that also means y equals x, right? So you expect to get the same values. We're going to get 2 for x and 2 for y. So 2 comma 2 is going to be a solution. Obviously, there are infinitely many solutions for every value of k. You're going to get a solution. The only value that is not allowed is k equals 0. Or is it allowed? Let's 
take a look. If k is 0, we're going to get 1 to the power of 0, which is 1, right? So x is going to be 1, and y is going to be 0 times x, which is 0. But unfortunately, this is, let's check, maybe it's going to work, right? x to the power 1 plus 0, and 1 plus 0 to the power 0. So this is 1, and this is also 1. So yes, k equals 0 works. So, so great, 1 comma 0 is the solution. Awesome. We got a solution. Okay, because they're not uh, both 0. But we said y does not equal 0, right? So what would happen if we initially said in this equation, hey, set y equal to 0? Would that work? Let's go ahead and test it out. If y is equal to 0, we're going to get x to the power x on the left-hand side. On the right-hand side, we're going to get x to the power 0. And in this case, x to the power 0 is equal to 1. And from here, we're going to get x to the power x equals 1, which means x equals 1. So yes, that would work. Okay, great. And if you remember the graph of y equals x to the power x, we actually got a solution at x equals 1. Okay, great. So k equals 1 gives us that. k equals 0 gives us that. k equals 2 is going to give you 9, 18. You can easily test it out. k equals 3 is going to give you 64, 192. Notice that y is 3 times x, so on and so forth, right? And if you replace k is with 1 half, something like rational number, let's see what happens, right? So we got these solutions. x is going to be 3 halves to the power 1 half. 3 halves to the power 1 half, and y is just going to be 1 half times that. What is 3, to the power, 3 halves to the power 1 half? It just means the square root of 3 halves, which can be written as root 6 over 2, and this can be written as root 6 over 4. So those weird irrational numbers are also going to work in our equation because we're looking for real, real solutions. Make sense? Okay, great. So you can basically replace k with anything. Even k can even be like something like square root of 5 plus square root of 7, right? And you can get some real irrational solutions from there. So there are infinite many solutions, right? And let's go ahead and take a look at the graph and see how, how some of the solutions play out in the big picture. Okay, here's the big picture. So here's the graph, all right? And the graph of what? Graph of this relation. So with Desmos, you can also graph relations such as these. But unfortunately, for some of these, the equation doesn't completely resolve. So you'll, you'll have some resolution problems, but you get an idea. Those are not straight lines, by the way, let me tell you. Those are curvy, but uh, you don't notice because of the zoom level. If you kind of zoom out, you're going to notice what they look like. But anyways, you see two points. The third one is kind of out of bounds, too big. But anyways, um, this is the graph of the relation. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you tomorrow with another video. Until then, be safe. Take care. Don't forget to watch the shorts. And bye-bye.